I think what the Arab states bring to the discussions around financing development and around the SDGs is the transitional context. One of the key issues about the Arab region now is that we are not just looking forward towards how we want to see the development uh, of our regions, but we are also looking backwards at the legacy of injustices that we have witnessed and how we can undo these injustices. And I think this is key to understanding the struggles that the people in the Middle East have been going through in the past uh, four to five years since the outbreak of unprecedented uh, uprisings in several countries. Uh, the most popular of are the uh, Egyptian and the Tunisian uh, uprisings. And one of the key issues that I want to address here is the very question of whether the states are able to address the demands of their people or not in light of the new power structures. And from the experiences we've had in Egypt and Tunisia, let me focus on one of the key issues that was always contested and continues to be contested in both countries, which is the issue of corruption. We have many human rights violations, we have many problems on many levels, but when we come to the issue of corruption, particularly because it comes uh, to these questions of power relations and the relationship between uh, the corporates and the states, and it really touches upon the, upon the question of whether our states still hold the power or is it uh, that they have really given up the power and the accountability completely uh, to the uh, corporates. But in fact, what has been happening is in light of rising claims uh, by investors, foreign investors against our states, and Egypt, let me tell you, uh, has been one of the top four countries sued uh, uh, in front of international arbitration panels by foreign investors on such outrageous uh, issues. And in light of this, what Egypt has been doing is moving very fast towards um, changing and altering its investment framework in order to make sure that investors are unchallenged. And this is not just Egypt, this is Tunisia as well. The Egyptian government did a good step of moving towards introducing a new minimum wage. So a French multinational company starts a claim in front of ICSID against Egypt and say, saying that the new minimum wage uh, will affect its investments in Egypt and therefore asked Egypt uh, for um, uh, compensation uh, for the damages that have happened to their investments in Egypt. And this is particularly what we're facing when it comes to thinking about negotiating things like ensuring workers' rights, ensuring uh, that uh, corporates don't get subsidies. We so it's really a question to us first about reclaiming the state in order to understand how can we work with that state uh, towards addressing the legacy of the past, but also towards looking forward uh, for development in our region. I think uh, um, the, the question of governance is, is, uh, is uh, key to uh, either uh, succeed in uh, uh, achieving the objectives of uh, the UN initiative or uh, in maybe uh, uh, hampering the pro development process. One of the main problems uh, uh, is the fact that uh, the state is captured by business elite uh, and uh, in many uh, developing countries and especially in the uh, Arab region uh, we have been seeing the development of crony capitalism. So all the opportunities that uh, can uh, uh, be brought uh, forward by, by the, the financing for development <coughs> initiative can be diverted to the benefit, the, the exclusive benefit, the only benefit of uh, this kind of uh, tiny uh, 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 fraction of the population uh, who is still in charge and uh, control the, the, the state. So uh, we have to figure out the, the, uh, the uh, to understand first maybe the, the mechanisms through which uh, uh, the uh, uh, state capture happens. The cronies of the, the rulers uh, uh, are uh, influential uh, in, in getting uh, laws which are uh, appropriate for their in interests. They, they, they can manage to uh, uh, influence uh, the judiciary, uh, the ministries, and the, through this mechanism they, 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 they get a, a lot of privileges. Finance, public procurement, 
uh, uh, discrimination in the uh, uh, implementation of regulations, uh, trade protection, and so on and so forth. So uh, the, 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 the question is how to uh, break down the, this nexus of uh, uh, state business relations and uh, uh, promote uh, uh, a new state. Uh, now it is clear that the, the state has to, to, to step in in order to uh, uh, have uh, and to make development happen. And, uh, uh, but what kind of state? We need, uh, certainly we need the, the developmental state, but we need more uh, a democratic and developmental state. Uh, a developmental state who is accountable to people. I'd like to think that, uh, that Tonga has gone through uh, the equivalent of the Arab Spring, I'd say a Polynesian Spring over the last 10 years. Uh, where the, uh, the monarch of Tonga has voluntarily devolved most of his executive powers to an elected prime minister and an elected parliament. And the leader of that Polynesian spring in Tonga 10 years ago is now the prime minister of Tonga elected last year. So that's a major achievement in the road to democracy that we've gone over. The, the revolution has not really uh, extended to the rights of women, but there is something in the, in the uh, a mechanism in the process which will get this new government to ratify the UN uh, Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Although we've been able to maintain our HDI at 0 0.7 and kept ourselves in the high development category, we, we now uh, have to rely on, on budget support from outside. Almost 10% of our recurrent budget is dependent on budget support, and that's the new development. And that is going to be a major threat in terms of whether or not the government, as the major actor, can maintain that HDI at that particular level. Clearly, in the context of the changes that we've seen globally, um, the old forms of democratic structures are not adequate. Um, I think we pride ourselves in the Caribbean, for example, of having stable democracies. But it's, it's clear that that's not enough. We have to think about how we deepen dec democratic structures from two perspectives. The institutions of government on the one hand, but importantly, the role of the citizen. And I think citizens have to see themselves as owners of the country with the responsibilities of ownership. Citizens have to see that the, their role in a democracy goes way beyond voting to monitoring and active engagement in the society. And, and so we have relied on our representative form of democracy and we recognize that it, it's not serving us well and it's not enough. Recently, the Latin American um, Public Opinion Project survey, the LAPOP studies in 2010, revealed that only about 4% of Jamaicans saw the member of parliament as an, as an important aspect of democracy. So and there's a sense in which the, our elected and our representatives don't seem to be doing enough. And so um, Mohammed mentioned that we have to move towards more direct forms of democracy. Um, whether it's through, the, through, through referendum. In, you know, there's a lot of work that has been done increasingly with respect to participatory budgeting. And so whether at the local level or the national level, we can devise structures in which citizens can directly or indirectly influence policies. The hope is uh, more maybe on, on, on the streets politics. Look what's happening in, uh, in Greece. Uh, in Spain, but uh, the, 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 the issue is how to link uh, social movements <coughs> to the political sphere. How social movements can become uh, uh, a political actor, I mean, uh, in control of government in order to uh, implement uh, some progressive 
uh, uh, policies uh, uh, in favor of, uh, of uh, the, uh, the people, uh, in favor of uh, women, in favor of uh, the uh, trade unions, and so on and so forth. So the, the, the we we need to 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 be critical about about uh, our behavior, about our actions, uh, in order to to make uh, things change. Uh, 